The UN is about to go broke within a month, which spells disaster for the organization. But should we even care? This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, released a statement last Tuesday saying that the UN could run out of money by the end of the month as it faces an unprecedented funding crisis. Almost one third of the UN member states have failed to pay their annual contribution to the UN budget, which has left the organization 1.4 billion euros short. The Secretary General insisted that the 64 member states who have not paid up should do so, quote, urgently and in full. Guterres said, The UN runs the risk of depleting its liquidity reserves by the end of the month and defaulting on payments to staff and vendors. Our work and our reforms are at risk. Well, it's no mystery why countries wouldn't be paying their contributions at a time like this. There's a global crisis taking place called the coronavirus. And when a crisis strikes, one has to make careful decisions about how resources are allocated and what is prioritized. Apparently, there are at least 64 countries in the world who did not prioritize the UN or view it as an essential expense. And why would they? Whatever about its original purpose, the UN has become a joke in recent years. This is the same UN that employs a human rights expert who declared Britain the most sexist country on earth. Not Saudi Arabia, where women aren't allowed to drive legally. Not India, where there is no such crime as marital rape. Not other countries that practice honor killing, female genital mutilation, stoning or public flogging. But Britain. To this UN so-called expert, the UK is the most overtly sexist country in the world. This is similar to last year when a UN rapporteur made the outrageous accusation that Ireland is guilty of colonialism and must pay reparations because some of its people were sent to the Caribbean in bondage under Cromwell. It'd be funny if it wasn't so insulting. The UN is such a joke, in fact, that up until as recently as four months ago, the UN Human Rights Council included authoritarian hellscapes like China, Saudi Arabia and Rwanda, a country which is most famous for its brutal machete genocides. These are the people who are charged with defending the human rights of the world. Luckily for all of us, however, in January of this year, they were replaced with Libya, which has an active slave trade, Sudan and Venezuela. Venezuela, of course, is a communist disaster zone led by dictator Nicolas Maduro. Maduro's government has been accused by the international community and groups like Amnesty International of crimes against humanity. But now, as of this January, they are in charge of the UN's human rights. What more proof does one need that this is simply not a serious organization? But more than that, there's something very sinister at the heart of the UN. In his statement, the Secretary General said that the UN needed the contributions of member states to continue their work and mentioned peacekeeping as an example. Yet between 2004 and 2016, there were almost 2,000 accusations of sexual abuse against UN peacekeepers. One example from 2018 includes a group of Nepalese soldiers representing the UN who, upon arriving in Sudan, were accused of raping several teenage girls. Abuse and rape seem to be an endemic problem among the UN's so-called peacekeepers. So maybe the fact that they're running out of money isn't such a bad thing after all. In order to justify their enormous budget, the UN should at least be fit for purpose, and I don't think anyone could argue that they are at this point. If you like this commentary and you want to see more like it, be sure to share this video and let us know how you feel in the comments below. Thanks for watching.